Hi there YouTube. Today I'm going to talk about the Raspberry Pi. Now for those of you who've probably been hiding under a rock these past five years, um, a Raspberry Pi is a small, normally single board mini computer. Um, they're used with the Linux kernel which is loaded via a SD card. This is a Raspberry Pi Zero, um, so it's this format, it's not a micro SD. Um, I got one of these for about £10 from a junk shop. It was good to experiment with. I ended up hooking this up to my lounge TV. Unfortunately, the processor and memory, uh, the RAM, that's random access memory, is woefully inadequate for multitasking on this. I loaded Chromium, that's their Chrome-based browser, I believe. I could be wrong. <laughs> so, um, But it crashed, it didn't work. I found other very low-spec browsers on the repository um, but none of them would play ball unfortunately. Um, I just wanted a small um, quickly bootable computer just so if I'm watching telly or watching Netflix or something I can just surf the web check things out without actually having a laptop on my sofa. Um, so yeah so I thought I'd treat myself and got the new Raspberry Pi 4. Uh, this is the Labist's kit. So in this video I'm going to open it, uh, assemble the kit, hook it up to the TV and see if it'll actually fulfil my requirements. Um, and hopefully I'll be on my sofa surfing the web in no time. OK, let's see how we get on. Right, so now let's open the box and see what we've got. This is a Raspberry Pi Model B. I'm hoping it's the 4 gig version. Um, if it isn't, I think I'll be disappointed. No squeaky box. So yes, four gigabytes RAM. This must be the board with the 64-bit quad-core Cortex A72 processor. Four gigabytes RAM, two micro HDMI ports, which is good. I could run two screens if I wanted has two USB 3 ports, two USB 2 ports, Ethernet port, wireless Bluetooth and a 5 volt uh, USB-C power supply inlet which is good. So as you can see this is a huge improvement uh, from the Raspberry Pi Zero which just has you not even sure if they're USB 2 to be honest. Um, so it has the micro SD port, um, Ethernet, but no Bluetooth, no Wi Fi. So this is definitely a upgrade. What else do we have in the kit? Have uh, quite a useful for uh, picture frame. Perfectly uh, rectangular bit of foam. Get excited about these things. <laughs> so, as we can see, yes, we've got a power supply here. That's good. Because I noticed with the Raspberry Pi Zero, I got erratic performance if I didn't use a proper charger. I ended up having to root out uh, my charger that came with my iPad um, and that was beefy enough. Obviously plugging the USB-C, not lightning. So this is good. This has the micro HDMI 
So that's good. That's going to save me rooting around in my bit box. Looks like we have a case here, which is good. Not sure why they've got a. This looks like a uh, tripod attachment. So that should be good. What have we got here? Oh, that's a second micro HDMI cable for the dual monitor setup. Now we start getting technical. So 32 megab megabytes and disk uh, micro SD card. I'm not sure if this comes preloaded with the uh, Raspbian kernel. Raspbian's uh, a flavour of Linux called a distro for distribution, I'm guessing. I could be wrong. Again, let me know if I am. Um, Linux has been around with us for a long time now. I think it was 1991. I used to play around with it a lot. Uh, I used to when I didn't have much money. Not that I've got much ma now. I used to buy old laptops from car boot sales. And obviously they were too old to run Windows. Um, so I just used to put on a Linux distribution. Quite miss it really. These look like some sort of heat sinks. Maybe these are just to aid uh, cooling. Oh yes, we have a fan here. So this will probably plug into the motherboard and it will provide cooling. Which is good. <laughs> That's quite cool actually. That's going to be pretty useful. Um, because not many cards actually have, not many laptops, so yeah, uh, have card readers now. So if I plug in an SD into this one, that's going to be really useful actually. Cool. And of course we've got a small Phillips or Diamond electrical screwdriver. Again, that's going to come in very useful. And have we got any instructions? Yes, we do. Quick start guide. So, holding this upside down, really. So that's good. This gives us uh, the guide QR code. I wonder if that connects to more detailed instructions. Awesome. So, uh, let's see if we can put this together. OK, let's start constructing this. Um, I was disappointed that there weren't any printed instructions in the box. Um, there's brief instructions on the product detail. That's on uh, labists.com. Raspberry Pi 4 Model B, if you've got this. Right. Rather stupidly think I might try and do this in one shoot. I think I might start sobbing though, it looks very fiddly. Right, so... Okay, I'm guessing the fan goes there. Okay, so let's put the fan there. I think it's going to be the pointy screws. So why is it called the Raspberry Pi? I always thought it was Pi as in 3.14 recurring. Um, but apparently it's short for Python because obviously it was designed just for a educational tool for people to learn Python. Which is partly the reason why I wanted to experiment with Raspberry Pis. Why Raspberry? Uh, well, the creator seems to think uh, that it's based on the era of early computing where everything was fruit related. So you have Apple computers. Uh, you also mentioned the acorn. I want to be pedantic, but is an acorn a fruit? 
Right, so we've got these copper heat sinks here. So this looks like it's for the processor. I guess it goes around that way. It has uh, sticky backs, which I think is 3M tape. So let's just stick that on. Okay, so there's that. This one here looks like it's the right shape for the memory. So let's give that a go. Yeah, that seems to fit there. I remember doing this once to a PC I built. Uh, it was a tube of uh, very gooey silicon coolant. Got it absolutely everywhere. And is that by? I think that should go diagonally, but to be honest, too late now. Um, this is the Ethernet chip, so I want to keep this cool ideally. So let's connect these. These are the power cords, so black cord, three pins in, red cord. I think if you want quiet mode, you put it on the second row. If you want turbo cooling, which I probably do. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put the red connector on the first pin, which, okay, cool. Now let's see if it fits in the case. Obviously you want to make all the ports align, so I've got this the wrong grey round. Okay, so let's uh, put that in like so. Ah. So that's clicked in there as you can see those have lined up so these are the non pointy screws I'll just secure the motherboard in place it's had a moment of panic because I'm not sure what that chip is but there doesn't seem to be any uh, cooling for that one. Let's just put the rest of these in. So, let's try a flat one. See if we can loop that wire around. Right, does it need a final screw to secure it? No. Right, that's all lined up. So again, that's the tripod. Obviously, if it has a camera attachment, that would make a lot of sense. Uh, but we don't have the camera module, so... When I connected the micro SD card to my PC, I saw it contained a disk image. So I inserted it straight into the Raspberry Pi, connected it to my TV in the lounge, and it booted up into a boot screen, gave me two options. I could either boot a full, install a full version of Raspbian, or install Kodi as a media center. I decided to install Raspbian. I didn't film it. I didn't think you'd like to see a slow progress bar <laughs> going across the screen. It took about 10 minutes. Um, so then I've just powered it off 
and now uh, we can go downstairs and uh, actually see Rasby and boot up. Right, so what I've done, I've hooked it up to the uh, telly. I've used a HDMI splitter. This one shared with the PlayStation. Um, just saves me fiddling behind the telly. Spiders behind there. <laughs> and this is the power which goes in the DCN. I've hooked up a wired keyboard and mouse just so I can operate it. Um, so yeah, as you can hear the fan's a bit noisy. It's probably why they did give you an option for the quiet fan mode when I was doing the pins but uh, I could live with that you know. Uh, had an Xbox 360, that was like a jumbo jet taking off. So, okay, as we can see, we've booted into a rather nice desktop. So, can it fulfill my requirement of browsing the web whilst I'm lounging on my TV? So, let's try. Okay, anybody think of a good website? Let's just Raspberry Pi. And as you can see, this is quite responsive actually. So let's just click on the Raspberry Pi. I've got a YouTube notification. Let's close that down. So yeah, cool. So yeah, well, that's very responsive. So yeah, I'm happy for that and uh, I can play around with programming Python, doing some Java and web development, hopefully whilst uh, snuggled up with a nice warm mug of cocoa on the sofa. <laughs> okay, as always, thanks for watching. Bye.